Hey guys, so in this video we're going to start talking about rolling motion, which is the motion of a rigid body, um, some sort of disc-like or wheel-like object that not only spins around itself, but also moves sideways. So that's called rolling motion. So let's check it out. All right, so rolling motion, I also like to think of this as free wheels is what we're going to talk about. And so far we haven't talked about that yet. What we've seen is we've seen either a point mass moving around a circular path, or we've seen um, rigid bodies moving around themselves. So imagine sort of a cylinder that is free to rotate around um, its central axis, something like this, okay? So think of this as a fixed wheel, right? These are fixed wheels, they are fixed in place. Now, in some problems, we're gonna have these rigid bodies or these shapes that are going to not only be rotating around themselves, but they're also going to be moving sideways. So they're both rotating, so they have an omega, because they're spinning, and they're moving. And when I say moving, I mean they're actually moving sort of sideways. They're not fixed in the same place. Um, we're gonna think of these as free wheels, okay? And that's why I call this free wheel. Um, and the best example, I think the most memorable example I can give you is actually rolls of toilet paper. So if you have a roll of toilet paper that's fixed in place as it normally is, um, this is a fixed axis, okay? So here's the roll and it can spin, it has a W, but it doesn't move sideways. So it doesn't move sideways, so I'm gonna do a no, which means V equals zero, okay? V is when you actually move sideways. If you spin in place, you're not actually moving. Now, so in this case, W is not zero, but V of the center of mass is zero, okay? The middle, center of mass in the middle, the middle of the cylinder doesn't move, it stays in place, okay? Now, in the case of a free axis or a free wheel would be if you had a, a roll of toilet paper, that is, well, rolling sort of on the floor, right? And it's doing two things here. So it's rolling, let's say, this way. And if it's, it's not only rolling this way, but it's also moving. So if you combine this with this, you get this, right? So it's sort of moving this way. So I can say that it has omega and it has a velocity of its center of mass is moving to the right. So omega is not zero and the velocity of the center of mass is not zero either. What's special about these situations, the most important thing you need to know about these situations, is that there's a relationship between these two numbers, okay? And luckily, this relationship looks like something we've seen a lot of. So the velocity, let's say you're spinning with omega here. Um, the Imagine that if your wheel's spinning this way, then you're going in that direction, right? Um, there's a relationship between these two. The velocity of the center of mass for a wheel of radius r is simply r omega. Now notice how we didn't use little r, so I'm gonna write big R, not little r, because in this case, um, what we actually want is the actual radius of the, the wheel or the disc and not a distance from the center. It's the actual radius of this thing, okay? And this looks very similar to what we've seen. If you have a fixed axis, if you have a fixed axis like this, the velocity tangential at an edge here or here, these are tangential velocities, right? These are, let me make them blue. These are tangential velocities. These tangential velocities are little r omega. But we're not talking about a velocity of um, a, a point at the edge or any distance from the center, we're talking about the velocity of the middle of this thing because this thing moves sideways, okay? Two, so this is the most important thing you need to know. Two other things you need to know um, is that the velocity, there's a velocity at the top here and there's a velocity at the bottom. So the velocity of the center of mass is RW. You should know that the velocity at the top is going to be twice the velocity at the center of mass. So it's two RW, and the velocity at the bottom is zero relative to the floor, okay? Now, your book, um, 
probably at some point uh, your book may derive these equations, how to arrive at them. Your professor may derive them. Um, here, just for the sake of uh, simplicity and time, I'm just going to give you these equations without deriving. Here's a really easy way to remember this. Um, I'm going to draw this again here. V top, velocity at a point at the top, is 2 r omega. Velocity in the middle is 1 r omega. And velocity at the bottom is 0 r omega. Okay? So 0, 1, 2. Um, obviously, this simplifies into r omega. And this simplifies into 0. Okay? Those are the three velocities. Notice how this is different from this situation here. Here, the velocity of a point at the top of a circle of a cylinder of a disk that spins around itself is r omega and little r is the distance. Here, if you are a little edge at the top here, you are 2 r omega because you're moving. The idea is that this r omega here, right, combines with this r omega to give you two of them. So I'll just mention that briefly. Uh, but those are the equations you need to know, okay? Most of the time, you need to know um, the green one. Um, you don't always need to know the yellow one. The green one is the most important one, but I'll, I'll give you the yellow ones just in case. All right, let's do a quick example. This is very simple. Um, you just have to remember these three equations. All right, so I have a wheel stride of radius 0. Um, 0.30 centimeters. I actually, made, I actually meant to make this 30 centimeters or 0. 0.3. Sorry about that. So I'm going to say that it has a radius of 0.3 meters, okay? Um, and it rolls without slipping along a flat surface with 10 meters per second. So it rolls without slipping. So if it rolls, it has a W, and it rolls with 10 meters per second. So the wheel is actually moving. When I give you a velocity here, when I say that V wheel is 10, I'm giving you the velocity of the center of mass of the wheel, okay? So this velocity here, V center of mass, equals 10, okay? Now, there's something interesting here that we need to talk about. It says, rolls without slipping. Rolls without slipping is the condition for these three equations to work. These three equations are only true if you are rolling without slipping. But guess what? In all these problems, you will be rolling without slipping. Um, so you can basically just ignore this equation. Now, conceptually, you may need to know for sort of a multiple choice conceptual test uh, that this is the condition for rolling motion, okay? Rolling motion, the condition for rolling motion is that this is without slipping. That's a conceptual point there, all right? So let's get back to this question real quick. So I want to know, A, what is the angular speed of the wheel? So angular speed of the wheel is simply omega, okay? Now, notice that I know VCM and I know R, and I'm looking for omega. Well, this is very straightforward. There's an equation that connects all three of them, and it is that VCM equals big R omega. Therefore, omega is VCM over R. Velocity is 10 divided by 0.3. Omega, therefore, is 33.3 um, radians per second. Cool. Very straightforward. Um, part B, the speed of a point at the bottom of the wheel relative to the floor. This is just this V bottom right here. And if you know this conceptually, uh, or if you remember the equation, V bottom is just always zero um, for a rolling wheel, no matter what. Okay? So that's it's that simple. Um, omega is 33, and V bottom is 0. That's it for this one. Let's do the uh, next example.